welcome to I Do I See. Well, today a slightly different video, one that's been highly requested, uh, and I'm not surprised after um, the response I've had from the videos of my little Ultimate Axial FPV Head Tracker Crawler. Basically, everyone's been asking how do we wire up this little Trinity 3-axis Head Tracker module. I'm not surprised everyone's been asking and requesting this just because uh, when I wanted to do it I obviously went out and looked for the standalone units that you can buy and for some reason everywhere in the world seems to be sold out. I'm not sure whether or, or discontinued at places I'm not sure whether they uh, there was problems with them or people didn't like them I'm not sure what the deal was because they're just amazing sort of little devices. What I could find of course was the little Trinity head tracker module that fits inside the Fat Shark goggles. Sort of fits in the slot inside here. Um, of course, I wanted to keep the, the beautiful DJI HD goggles. They're just an amazing um, reception and, and an image. So I thought, surely there's a way I could make this little unit, the module, wire it up. Uh, obviously, it fits in their head units and, and connects to plugs. Um, to make it work uh, so surely if I just wired my own connections it should work um, doing a lot of research online <laughs> was just impossible I'd seen people do it uh, but to find out how to do the wiring was just one of the hardest searches I've ever done um, finally I got in touch with certain people that that could guide me through it a little bit a lot of trial and error still involved um, but it does work perfectly now, absolutely flawlessly. And in doing research, I'm, no wonder people have been contacting me asking how to make them. In doing research for this video, I decided to sort of have a look and find where I got the information from. And again, I couldn't find it. I had to search through my drawers for all my old information on it. So let's get started. Um, let's just talk through the components you're going to need for it. Firstly, you're going to need the little head tracker unit. That's the Trinity 3-axis head tracker module, as I said. Uh, what you're also going to need is a little momentary switch. Now, it's not an on-off switch. It's a momentary switch, so you push it and it springs back up. When you turn the head tracker on, uh, it'll be on, but it won't be active. So you've got to hit that and it'll become active and then the head tracker will just start working. Also, that button you need if you want to set the channels of the head tracker, it's a default I think 567 for pan tilt and, and um, rotate which of course we don't have on this unit um, and so you need to press the button a certain amount of times as soon as you hear certain beeps to activate it what you're also going to need is a buzzer a beeper um, now that obviously uh, relates to this so every time you hit it it'll make a sound uh, if it's on your head you want that audio confirmation that you've hit that also the module sends out tones so you uh, for the settings so you're going to need to hear how many beeps obviously what you're also going to want is a 3.5 mil female plug that's basically just to take your ppm signal that's from these so that's just going to slot straight into there um it's that sort of unit that you're going to want for that to slot straight into there. Just a female 3.5 mil plug. You're also going to want a power plug. I always use Dean's plugs. Um, I know some people have issues with pulling them out. Such small little units, but um, you're gonna need some sort of power. Whatever you're powering your head tracker from or your goggles, I run a splitter cable uh, and that way one can go to the goggles and this one can go to the head tracker unit. You're also going to want what's known as a BEC or a UBC, UBEC. Um, that's going to go between your power plug and your head tracker unit. Uh, a lot of these come with an on off switch, so you can insert those. They're very handy when you uh, just don't want to hit that buzzer and you want to take turn or take the goggles off. You can switch that off and that way the, the head track is not wobbling around. Your little man's head's not flying about. Basically all the UBEC's going to do is, uh, I run these off a 3S LiPo, so 11.1 volt. 
uh, the head tracker unit, I think, takes sort of five to six volt um, or five volt at best. Uh, so if you've got a UBEC that sort of uh, pumps out three to six volt, I guess, probably five to six. Uh, whatever battery you plug in, the 11.1, the current will go through and the Beck will only provide the unit six volt. I've gone through a couple, of, well, went through one unit just by not having it, plugging in the battery. It lasted a little while until, um, yeah, I smelt smoke right above my head, which is not the best thing. <laughs> what you might need is a cable like this now, or a plug like this at least. This has got some, some cables coming off. It's got six inputs. These will match the prongs on the back of the head tracker unit. Now, they're not necessary. The first unit I had, I did so just solder the uh, wires to the little prongs, but they're very, very tiny. It's a lot easier if you've got a plug like this. Um, now, this plug came off, what I found most of us have, a brushless motor. It's the sensor cable for a censored brushless motor. Obviously, I, the, the censored cable goes between the ESC and the motor of the brushless system. Now, they are not the perfect with the part, but very, very close. You, I found I just had to bend the last prong on my head tracker unit just a slight little bit for them all to fit. So as you can see, those plugs fit in nicely. And you can see I've just got the one cable coming off A there. And I've actually cut the other cables, so I've just got one, I've just got four out of the six coming out, which is one, three, four, and six, obviously. And as you can see, they don't exactly fit in there perfect, but they are good enough to make contact. So, let's just bring break my unit apart there. I've taken it apart and off the goggles just to show you. Obviously, you can see there, Cables going to the on off switch, which is on the outside of the box. Now this is the unit itself. I've got it sitting out a little bit from my wires and cables because I found the head tracker unit is quite prone to drifting if it has some magnetic uh, components near it. Hence why I've sat it out a little bit from this component in this box that I made. And it sits out from any possible magnetic elements in the goggles themselves. Uh, anything magnetic around one of these units because of the GPS compass and so forth in it will set the head tracker into a drift and you don't want that when you're driving. Um, so if we have a look at the back of the unit this is what we want to see. Let's just say you've got one of these at home. Flip it over so the right angle is at the bottom right and the prongs are sticking up right like such. Let's look at the pins from left to right. Let's number the ones at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's mark the ones at the top, A and B for ease. Let's get rid of the ones we don't want to save confusion, which is two, five, and B. And that leaves us A, one, three, four, and six. And let's look at what they do. All right, one is ground or earth, or the negative. Three is your PPM signal. Four is 3.3 volt. Six is five volt, and five is actually five volt as well, but we've got rid of that one. A is your momentary switch and buzzer. And now let's look at the wires coming off them. There's gonna be three off the ground, basically, one off the other three down there at the bottom, and two coming off A. Now let's work out where those other ends go. Uh, they'll obviously go to the components that I said you had, which is your momentary switch, your buzzer, your female 3.5 mil uh, plug, and your female power plug. And now we need to know where all these wires are connecting to. Uh, so obviously the ground has got the three wires coming off, the earth or negative, whatever you want to call it. One's going to the beeper or the buzzer. One's going to the 3.5 millimeter female plug for the PBM signal. And the other one is going to the power plug. Number three, the purple wire is going off to your tip of your 3.5 mil female plug. Um, obviously the ground is heading to the negative of that, the ring or sleeve 
the wire coming from pin number four will be heading up to your momentary switch and that's also where one of the cables from A or wires from A will be heading. Pin number six is going to be heading to uh, the positive of your power plug. Obviously the other one was the ground. And the other section of A will be heading to your buzzer. Obviously the buzzer and the momentary switches are, are connected for every time you hit that momentary switch, so you, you'll get an audio confirmation. And as I said, and as you can see from this diagram, the UBEC is just wired in between those with the on-off switch. Uh, the on-off switch isn't 100% necessary because you can turn it off uh, or make it inactive, at least with that, but I like to be able to turn it off. Basically, once they're all wired up, uh, you're good to go. And this is basically a standalone unit. Once you put it in a little box, uh, keep it compact. As I said, uh, try and keep this away from your wires. Um, just the wires sort of can become active and a little bit magnetized. Uh, and I found just through trial and error, just by positioning this while I had the air tracker on until I had absolutely no drift whatsoever. Um, and haven't had drift for months and months right now. Now, of course, there's a lot more going on once the signal comes straight out of this cable. There's not, um, it's not just magically going to happen. You've got to plug it into your transmitter, obviously, and train a port and do all those functions. There is a lot of other videos on how to do that. I've, I've made a video on, on the components you need to set it all up, but how to then program your controller. Uh, you just need to look in how to program head tracker for train a port, and a lot of videos will show you. I've, I've had, I actually tried a couple of transmitters thinking they'd work, um, and they didn't. They either didn't work, or I just didn't have the information or the knowledge how to do it. Um, the Tyrannus one that I've got, there is a lot of people who have, have uh, done videos on how to use that trainer port, hence why I thought I'd save myself a bit of pain <laughs> after going through the pain of making this, uh, and buy something that, that someone can sort of talk me through how to program. Uh, but she's an amazing little unit. Now, if you're watching this and think that's exactly what I've been after, that's the information, please subscribe. Uh, I want to keep making videos like this. So if this has helped you, and I know if you've been looking how to do it, it's really hard to find anywhere else. And hopefully I've just made it very, very clear. If you do want to know more about the programming, please contact me uh, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.